Hello from Centrotech and welcome to the keynote about 3D surface textures for additive manufacturing. I'm Stefan and we will spend the next 15 till 20 minutes together about this interesting topic. And first I would like to show you some applications of textures followed by how do we create surface textures and at the end what do you have to consider when 3D printing. So let's start. You may ask yourself how we get aesthetic looking parts out of black material powder. So as you already know, selective laser centering is the perfect solution for functional parts with complex geometries. But how we can jump from production into quality end use parts with this plastic black powder material so there are a few different opportunities you can use for a better appearance. For example, there are several surface treatments like dyeing or spray painting for coloring your parts. In combination with the black material powder, we recommend um, spray painting where a thin color layer is applied on your part. Another post-processing method is to polishing. With the Sintratec polishing um, station, small needles will peel the surface of the part and get a slightly darker and brighter surface appearance. And the third um, option is surface texturing. And that's the te topic I would like to tell you more in this keynote. So let's start. To give you an idea what application you can use in combination with 3D printed texture, here are a few samples. For example, decorative surfaces. With the benefit of additive manufacturing, you can imitate surface textures like wood, fabrics or also leather, for example. An additional advantage is Usually, um, surface finishing are added at the very end of the manufacturing process. With the benefit of additive manufacturing, you are able to integrate these textures and structures into the product development process. That means you can easily release different um, appearance and structures on the same part without interruptions or additional costs in production. Another uh, application of 3D printed textures for can be haptic surfaces where friction is needed, for example. Think about a shift knob in a car, like here on the picture, or a knurling screw to tighten something into, into the production. Or another interesting example is the knurled lid on a PET bottle, for example. That makes it easier to open and close your favorite beverage. So that's also a good example for haptic surfaces. The third example are performance surfaces for flow control, for example. With the 3D texture, you can generate um, turbulence flow, for example, and improve the performance of your aerodynamics. Have you might ask yourself, why does golf ball have dimples? These small spheres in the ball. The reason is a golf ball with dimple flies almost twice as far um, than a golf ball without. So when I think about it, 3D texture can make me or us to better golfers. That's great, I think. <laughs> So I hope I could give you a good overview with these applications and now we talk more about how we modeling these textures. So the first step is to choose a design tool. Here are a few listed. If you are a mechanical engineer, I think you are very common with SOLIDWORKS for example. In the 2019 version they provide an easy-to-use workflow to apply surface textures 
two models. Another software, for example, is Entopology. It's a generative design software which has the goal to exploit the full potential of advanced manufacturing techniques to make it more easy to use in the, yeah, in the workflow in the software. The third option is Blender, for example. For me, a good software solution to start with and gain some experience because it's for free as it is an open source software and there are plenty of tutorials available thanks to the huge community of Blender. So after choosing the design software, you are able to modeling your part. Think about areas you would like to separate from the textures as it might be useful for if you have a counterpart which has to match properly and fit accurate. Or for example, uh, a hole where you want to place a screw it in it where you want to have a flat surface, for example. You also can modeling um, your own texture on a two-dimensional surface. That's very easy, but it becomes more advantaged if you have a um, surface like freeform or curved or spherical um, parts. So how we get this applied on a 3D freeform surface? The basic on the most 3D textures are a 2D black and white image. Like shown on the screen on the left, for example, geometric patterns or on the right, more organic wooden or stone patterns, for example. There are plenty of those hide maps available on different platforms on the internet for free or for a small fee. If you have chosen one of these 2D black and white image, you can, or according to the grayscale of the uh, pattern, a, a three-dimensional surface will be generated according to the grayscale means if you have a white area, it keeps in place and we have a black color, it will be displaced by 100%. So by assuming a strength to this coloring, we generate a three dimensional texture. Depending on the software you use, there are several um, workflows available um, apply the two-dimensional textures on your model. So in SOLIDWORKS, for example, are different mapping styles like for cubes or spheres or cylinders, which makes the pattern more um, consistent on the edge. Because the a smooth uh, edge transition is very difficult to achieve because um, you have to see or you have to adjust the texture size, for example, or also choose a pattern which is a bit more, which can hide irregulation. Another example to apply surface textures are UV mappings. So UV maps are the 2D representation of a 3D model. Think about it like uh, a piece of sheet metal before folding or a paper sheet of origami. The unwrapped surface makes it easier to attach the two-dimensional black and white image to it. And thanks to the unwrapped geometry, it's, there are less intersections if you compare, if you apply it to a, a, a cube, for example. Let's talk about the mesh size. So the mesh size is also very important if you want to have an accurate um, surface texture, you need a high resolution mesh. But be careful, uh, high mesh resolution means also a bigger file size of the step file. So depending on your computer, 
we recommend a file size between 50 and 100 megabytes. So these are all the parameters you have to know about when you're modeling 3D textures. And now I would like to tell you more about the 3D printing. So selective laser sintering belongs to the family of powder bed fusion. And that means we have a fixed layer height of 0 0.1 millimeters. That's very important to keep in mind when placing your part into the powder bed. To give you an, an idea why the set resolution is very important, here is an example of a part of a sphere. So on the left, this sphere is placed horizontal with a very low resolution, with only three layers in high. If we place the same sphere in a vertical position, we gain a much higher resolution with approximately 11 um, layers thickness. So that's very important. Here is another example with a stone structure. So if we have it printed flat on the powder bed, you can clearly see the layers step by step. But if we print the same texture uh, in a 45 angle, there are no noticeable layers visible. To give you a summary of the design rules, um, here a repetition. So number one is try to avoid flat textures on the powder bed. So because you have a low resolution appearance. The second rule is place them in a high set resolution, even if it takes a lot more powder and the printing process took a bit longer. And the third rule is if you have several faces in different angle, place to or try to place them equally so that the appearance is in a similar look. Yeah, I'm very um, thrilled about this amazing technology about 3D texturing, and I hope you're creative now too with, the, with surface structures and have a lot of fun. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Do you have questions <laughs> or this interesting yeah. discussions? Yeah. Yeah, of course, you can contact Sintratec or also there are plenty of tutorials available on YouTube um, or, yeah, or contact Sintratec, of course. <laughs> Okay, the question was if I have the, or did I created these surfaces and well, by myself and how? Yes, I created this by myself with, the, with Blender, the open source software, and it took me a few days to become familiar with the tool, but at the end, yeah, I'm very happy with the result and it was a lot of fun. Okay, thank you very much <laughs> for your attention. <laughs>